The simple truth is that the city of Chicago exists because of the river that flows through it. Native Americans who settled the land in the 14th century lived on the river's bank and cultivated the wild plants that grew in the marsh, including the wild onion they called the Chicago. As critical as the river was for the Native Americans, it became an invaluable transportation route for both early European explorers and later industrialists from the United States. The Chicago River connects Lake Michigan and the Great Lakes to the Mississippi Valley in the Gulf of Mexico. This strategic location made it indispensable for commerce, which in turn caused the city of Chicago to grow from a population of a few hundred in 1830 to over a million in 1890. However, the river had a major design flaw that was killing the city's residents. To correct this flaw, in 1892, engineers and city officials began a project to reverse the flow of the Chicago River, saving the population and, in turn, completing the biggest engineering project in human history. Native American settlers to live in the area that would one day become Chicago were primarily involved with trade and seasonal hunting. Since the land on the banks of the Great Lake were marshy and full of wild growing vegetation, it did not lend itself well to the self-sustaining lifestyle of tribes like the Miami and Potawatomi. In contrast to the small number of Indians that lived in the northeastern part of today's Illinois, areas downstate contained highly organized and sophisticated tribal cities, like Cahokia Mountains. A settlement that is in the 13th century was larger than most European cities. The true value of Chicago would become its strategic location as a transportation route, both for the early Indian traders, then for the Europeans that followed. The linchpin to the entire port system of Chicago would be a very modest river, formed by glaciers during the Ice Age that pushed eastward by the forces of gravity due to a natural continental divide in the middle of the state. Late in the 17th century lay the beginnings of Chicago as a port city. In 1673, the famed French explorers Marquette and Joliet traveled southward from the New France, or what is today, Canada. Their travels would bring them through the Great Lakes and into the mouth of the Chicago River. As they continued through the winding waterway, they discovered that not only did this river connect to the Great Lake, but with some careful navigation, a traveler could reach the Mississippi itself. Despite their findings, it would be another century before Chicago became a commercial trading center. It all started with the city's first resident, Jean-Baptiste Pointe du Sable, a native of Haiti, who set up a trading post on the banks of the river in 1783 and goes down in history as the first Chicagoan. Twenty years later, the United States government established a military post called the Fort Dearborn to protect the young country's economic interest as well as the threat they saw to its citizens from both the British and the Native American tribes. The politics of the Fort Dearborn aside, its creation made clear that Chicago was destined to be a very important city for the country, in large part because of the river. Chicago was a bustling town before 1825. After 1825, it grew faster than any city in modern history, going just from a few hundred pioneers to over a million residents over the next seven decades. The chief reason for Chicago's explosive growth was the completion of two canals in the first half of the 19th century. The first was the Erie Canal, completed in 1825 in New York State. Stretching over 350 miles, the Erie Canal connected the Hudson River with Lake Erie, and for this first time allowed cargo ships to pass from the Atlantic Ocean through the Great Lakes. The other canal was the Illinois and Michigan Canal, which was completed in 1848 and connected the south branch of the Chicago River 
with waterways that led to the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico. The effect of these two canals was to create an unbroken water passageway from the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Look Chicago as the key harbor in the middle. As the port grew, so did the city. And as the 19th century was coming to an end, Chicago was one of the biggest centers of industry and population in the country. A miracle of technology and innovation, but with one big problem. The Chicago River, which was the main reason for the city's growth, was also being used by the population as the main sewer system. With the natural flow of the river being eastward into Lake Michigan, this meant that the waste was dumped into the river. It wound up in the lake, contaminating this growing city's drinking water supply. Even moving the water intake cribs further into the middle of the lake could not prevent wastewater from entering the drinking water supply. Throughout the 19th century, the contaminated drinking water contributed to the widespread cholera and typhoid epidemics in Chicago, the worst being in 1885 when 200,000 people died. In the face of this catastrophe, the city took bold action. The reversal of the Chicago River ended with a big BOOM! On January 17, 1900, the city blew up the earthen dam pulling back the south branch of the river, and very gently, the pull of gravity reversed the flow of the river away from the lake and into the new deep trench that led toward the Mississippi. This date was eight years in the making. The long-anticipated sanitary and ship canal was 28 miles long, bigger than the Panama Canal, and now was carrying Chicago's pollution away from its drinking water. However, not everyone, everyone was happy about this. Imagine having a neighbor that throws all his garbage in your yard, simply because he doesn't want it in his yard. This is how cities south of Chicago felt in the year 1900. Moreover, there was nothing places like St. Louis could do to stop the flow of the Chicago River. The biggest reason no one could stop the new flow of the river is now is that now Chicago is the biggest port city in the country. To stop the river would have stopped the growth of the country itself. So for over a hundred years the Chicago River had been flowing backwards. The story of Chicago is unique because it's a story of big plans. There was never a plan bigger than to take what natural nature created and reverse it. Changing the direction of the city's river was a feat like no other and continues to amaze. It showed not only what a city could accomplish, but also created the first 20th century city. It is truly one of the wonders of the world. <laughs>